What's up guys, it's Dan, and I need a haircut. I'm making the skirt armor. I make this thing. <laughs> this fancy looking belt. It consists of 10 millimeter foam on the outside and it's shaped to position the skirt armor how I want it to be. And I'm using a full matte foam on the inside that's spaced from the outer layer. And this part obviously contours me. And the cool thing about this is I'm using the same overlap joint that I using for the lower body. When I put this on and clamp it together, the inner ring tightens so that it fits nice and snug on me. Like so. And it stays in place pretty well. But foam alone won't be as sturdy as I would need it to be. So I got some flat aluminum here. This is 1 16th thickness. I'm gonna use this and wrap it around the outside so that way this will stay nice and sturdy and won't warp around like that. So I want to avoid this. So here's where I am with the belt. Looks pretty elaborate. <laughs> so I got the aluminum screwed on to the foam to help keep it rigid. And I decided to add a small piece of wood to the back, keep it straight. I plan on making the rear armor removable with magnets. I'm gonna use quite a bit. Now the reason I'm gonna do that, and get in the frame. <laughs> the reason I'm gonna do that is, I don't know how long I'm gonna be walking around at a con or event or whatever. I'm gonna to wanna to sit down. And when you look at the death site, the rear armor there is just one huge piece. <laughs> so if that's, like somewhat permanently attached then there's no way I can sit and I want to be able to sit down because I, I gotta give myself a break or my knees might end up aching the rear armor will be removable I'll just reach around like remove my ass plate or butt plate <laughs> and then I'll be able to sit so that will attach with magnets now for the fronts and sides they're actually going to be mounted on hinges so that way they'll be able to flap up like so similar to the figure and gun plum. the center piece here the cod piece will just remain attached the skirt armor pieces i plan to make lightweight so i'll probably use format foam for that since it's lighter than hd foam so not sure if this is a rapid to any of you, probably those who normally craft like this. I just snapped my blade. <laughs> I was cutting this piece to the width that I wanted and then I kept going and I think I hit... No, I didn't get to the end of the table, but it went down somehow when I... Yeah, I probably did get to the end of the table. Or, I don't know, something, but it snapped this much off. And look how small my blade is now. <laughs> it's such a waste. There's like, what, six segments on this. I just sharpened it too. Now I got this little itty bit. <laughs> anyway, I switched to this knife from this one because it does cut easier because it's thinner. This one cuts good as well, but it is thicker. So this one does move through the foam better, but Damn it! <laughs> it just snapped off. I wasn't done using it yet. To put the blade back together, I use contact cement. No, that's not gonna work. Stupid overdubbing. Yeah, that sucked, but I gotta move on. I make a template for the cod piece and transfer it to 6mm foam. Then, magically, I complete the cod piece. There's a V-shaped piece that goes on the front. That'll be 3D printed. 
To mount it to the belt, I cut a piece of polyethylene cutting board material and attach it to the front with contact cement. I also had a 10mm foam plate to the back of the cod piece. And I attach it to the belt using M4 size hardware, which makes it removable if needed. The front armor is next. I make a pattern of the entire piece. I can always cut what I need from it to make the other pieces. And I try something new and use a bandsaw, just like Odin does, to cut these parts out. This really helps with keeping the parts the same, since they're pretty much all symmetric. I build up the front armor, and I do both at the same exact time to ensure they're a perfect mirror copy of each other. So here's where I am right now with the front skirt armor. Pretty much just enclosing everything. Got the top piece added. I need to put a panel up here, and then I need to put the piece with the vent that goes right in front. You can see. And it just so happens I'm using the colors <laughs> that is the color of the front skirt armor, so... I mount the front armor pieces to the belt using pieces of wood and hinges which allows them to move with ease. I'm making the side skirt armor pieces next. What I see here is a main piece. I can probably do it in either three pieces or one piece and cut channels into the sides here so I can bend it so it'll look seamless like this. And then I see uh, what looks like a border on the outside, which will be two millimeter foam. And these lines will be burnt in. Now these things, um, they're actually a bit recessed. I may cut those out and then push them in. And then there's a couple circles on the top there that I could just cut out out of, I don't know, two millimeter and just stick them on there. I pretty much do as I just explained. I make patterns for the side armor. Just the main face and one of the sides is all I need for this since both of them are actually exactly the same piece. I was only able to cut one of them to be one piece since both didn't fit on the piece of foam that I had. But that's okay, I just need to cut one side and carefully attach it seamlessly. And for the one that is one piece, I cut v-grooves into it so I can fold it into shape. I add the border using 2mm foam and also create the recessed detail by cutting out the sections and pushing them in slightly. And I add the circles that go into them. I mount everything up using small pieces of wood and the hinges. It's key that these clear the lower body when they move. The rear armor panel is next. It's just one huge piece. So I use one huge piece of floor mat foam to make it. Shout out to any Ninja Turtles fans out there. I make the rear armor similar to the front armor pieces. By cutting the main face or surface of the piece first, then attaching the pieces that go around it to build it up. And here's the completed rear armor piece. I also make the bracket that goes on the back that holds the beam sight. I hold the rear piece in place to get a rough idea of how it'll look. So to mount the rear skirt armor, I made this thing. <laughs> it's, it is made of wood. I'm using wood on some of the skirt armor but it's not too bad. These are probably the biggest pieces of wood I'm using. Um, just quarter inch plywood and pieces of pine, lightweight. I have the magnets right here and I got a strip of magnets right there. So that way I can remove this when I want. I'm hoping it's not like too strong or I'm end up ripping the rear <laughs> armor off like, oops. <laughs> but yeah, so this is gonna fix to the Rear skirt armor on the inside there. 
Um, yeah, we'll see how that works. So, I had to rework a bunch of stuff. <laughs> Here is the skirt armor with the front mounted. Now this is actually different. I don't know if you can tell. The sides are shorter. And this is why, as you can see in the picture, it's way too long on the side. So I had to correct that. I took some material off the side. Um, I had padding right here. I removed that and scooted the back in more. I also reworked the back bracket there to mount closer to the belt. I also brought the cod piece in a bit more. Had to trim at it. And I think this is gonna look better. Now let me show you how I'm mounting the armor plates. You see right there, I just got a piece of wood sticking way up there because I want the hinge point to be way up there. So that way it can move, but it won't hit the body. It stays where it is. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about body clearance on that. I'm still mounting the side armor here. With all this trying to trim down the sides, these ended up being way too wide. So I had to section these by one inch. I cut it straight down the middle, straight in half, <laughs> took an inch off of it, and then stuck it all back together. Now I did my best to do it carefully. There's still a seam on here. This one I actually did on my bandsaw, just to see how it would look like. The other one here I did with a razor knife. Looks way better. <laughs> There's a gap there, in which this will just roll there and cover it. And it'll pretty much look like that. That looks a lot better to me. It is shorter on the sides compared to the picture. I'm just gonna mount the side armor pieces and I may be close to finishing this thing up. Doing, doing finishing work, getting it ready for paint, so yeah, really close to being done with this. It's just a skirt armor, <laughs> but yeah, um, I want it to look how it should, as you can see. <laughs> I apply Alex Flex on all the pieces. My Alex Flex was actually pretty soft, so I took advantage of that and spread a thin layer all over the parts that I can later sand down smooth. I sprayed all the parts with black plastic dip. I had just enough for two good coats on all the pieces, including the large rear panel. I didn't have enough plastic dip for the belt, so I just painted it with PlatFX acrylic. I also painted the wood parts with PlatFX, a good two coats. For the aluminum, I decided to cover it with 2mm black foam instead of painting it. So I got everything painted and mounted, and here it is. <laughs> the skirt armor to my death side cosplay. Look at all of this. Look at this gun plot <laughs> that I'm making. Or is it gun foam? <laughs> anyway, this is looking really incredible. <laughs> I know I'm the one making it, but still, seeing it all come together and all together like this is just, it's crazy. Sorry if I'm messing up the light. The light is actually right here. I don't know. Because I see it on the phone going in and out. Maybe if I stand forward? The skirt armor was actually a lot of fun to make. The only piece that I had to worry for fitting was the belt, which was not too complicated. These pieces, I just had to um, make them a good size. I believe my scale for the armor pieces is 12.5, so smaller than the body and the head. Again, you got 14, 13.5, and 12.5. That's an okay range. I mean, look at it. <laughs> All together, it looks really good. Yeah, these pieces were actually a lot of fun to make. It's just building them up, seeing it all come together into
to its final form, and then looking at them painted looks really cool. I still need to do better on finishing work. <laughs> um, I did try doing the whole Alex Fetzning and sanding it. I sanded off too much on some, and it ended up giving a fuzzy foam look. Um, on the back plate, I heat treated that with the heat gun, and I think that's the way I'm gonna go from now on. It gives somewhat of a textured surface, but it's even throughout, and it looks uniform, and that's pretty much what I want. It looks good on camera as I'm looking at my phone screen. It looks great, but there are finishing defects all over, <laughs> and it sucks because it's a dark color, and you can see imperfection more on darker colors. But anyway, who else is excited? <laughs> this thing looks incredible, all dusty. Oh, I forgot to mention, I did do some modifications to the lower body. On the lower section, it used to flare out, you know, for that Gundam shape. I took that away, so it's close to straight up and down, all over. The reason I did that is to try my best to imitate the supermodel waist <laughs> that that these Gundams tend to have. You can see how tiny that waist is. Right there. It's not fair. <laughs> we'll have to try to keep the size down because I'm still trying to maintain Gundam proportions as best as I can. How do you like my scarecrow? I should put it outside and see what happens. It'll get stolen. <laughs> so yeah, um, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you're enjoying this series. I'm gonna continue working on this, obviously. Try to get as much done as I can. Damn, I keep messing with the light. Every time I look away, it gets dark, right? And then when I look at you, it gets light. <laughs> Do I have superpowers or something? <laughs> but yeah, so I'll see you guys in the next video.